interact with the customers um, because they come more than one time to the show and so you're able to you know find out what they like what they don't like and um, but most of all just to communicate with them you know um, it, well it becomes like a studio here it is like a studio where you have customers come in and uh, and uh, you can talk to them I was inspired at a very young age at 12 was when I first was introduced to opals and uh, I fell in love with them just for the pure beauty of them then I had also an uncle that lived on the opal fields and that's how I started getting involved in opals This was a, a series of opals that I cut up and um, I thought, well, it'd be fantastic to make a whole neck piece. Uh, I've never seen anything like it anywhere. And I think when it's finished, uh, I'm gonna put diamonds in between each of the uh, opals and finish it off with gold in the back. And when it's complete, I think it's gonna be very, very uh, unique and different. Most, uh, most people are used to only the, um, what they call light opal. Because for many, many years, the Asian market could reproduce the stones, calibrate them and set them in standard mountings. That's the reason um, I've gotten involved with boulder and black opal because you have to, once you cut the stone you have to build around that stone a design and so it becomes strictly one of a kind piece and that's what I like the best about opals is that you have to pretty much conserve as much opal as you can and create beautiful one of a kind pieces. They're going to, you know, have a great experience uh, visiting all the artists here because there's there's uh, a lot of great talent in such a small confined area, and also all the artists here are very very likable people.